it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be a lot, so don't worry about it. It'll be easy. Uh, then we're going to talk about the zero waste hierarchy. So there's redu reducing, reusing, recycling, and then we're also going to tell you a bit about refusing and responsible disposal and where they fit into the um, the waste pyramid. Then we're going to talk about what is recycling and then how to recycle and all the things that you need to know about sorting your waste at Cal. Um, then we'll talk about why we recycle. There's a lot of reasons that people don't really know about. And then we're going to talk about the great recycling dilemma, which is just a bit of controversy about uh, recycling that I think it's important to bring up. Uh, and then we'll finish with just some questions and then a brief discussion between everyone. Okay, so my name is Joseph Olivas. Uh, I'm a sophomore at Cal. I study environmental engineering and genetics and plant biology. Um, I'm also minoring in Portuguese language and literature because I'm interested in uh, the Amazons and the current conservation efforts happening there, and especially the plants there. So I'm interested in ethnobotany. Um, as we said before, I'm a staff associate here at Cal Zero Waste. Right now I'm working on to the Campus Race to Zero Waste, which is a competition we'll be entering in the beginning of 2021. So stay tuned for that. And finally, I'm in the Epsilon Eta environmental, Environmentalism Fraternity, which if you go to Cal and you're interested in conservation, then I would definitely recommend it. Awesome. So as I said, thanks, Joseph. As I said before, my name is Rose. I'm a junior year history major. I'm currently located in San Diego for the Zoom semester. I'm part of Cal Zero Waste Res Hall education and housing team. I first got into this work my sophomore year after being inspired by learning about this, these issues from my floor mates and my classes. Um, and since then, I've kind of spread out into some different sustainability work in CalPERI to Zero Waste Coalition, and ultimately decided to focus on my waste, my work here at Cal Zero Waste. Now we would like everyone else to introduce themselves. Yeah, so just really briefly, we'd just like to know what your name is, what your year is, um, maybe your major, where you are. That's going to be pretty important for uh, coming up later in this presentation. And then the rest of the cycling, the rest of the question is really easy. Do you sort your recycling? Uh, how confident do you feel in your recycling abilities and knowledge? Um, so we can we can just popcorn. We can start with um, Annie if you want to go first. Cool. Hi, everybody. My name is Annie. I'm a third year studying society and environment. Um, and I'm currently in Berkeley for the semester. Um, so I live in an apartment complex and we do offer, my landlord offers recycling. So um, I try to recycle as best as I can. Um, and I feel confident that I'm sorting my waste correctly, but I sometimes do struggle with like, how, what do I recycle? Because I know that there are different rules for recycling in Berkeley versus recycling on campus. And that's always kind of an issue for me. I will popcorn over to Kieran. Or maybe I'll popcorn over to Lynn. <laughs> yeah, may maybe better for Lynn. Hi, Lynn King. I am Zero Waste Program Manager, and I do sort my recycling very much all the time, of course. Um, and then um, I'm pretty confident, but as I said, things do change all the time. So even, uh, you know, we check on it to make sure that we know what we're recycling to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Great. I will popcorn it over to Jenna, who just joined us, who happened to also, I'll mention, used to be a staff associate. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jenna Feudin, and yes, I was a staff associate. I think that was 2016, um, like January 2017. Um, I'm happy to be here. I um, I'm a third year studying environmental sciences and I'm currently located in Berkeley. Right. Oh, sorry, I'm on two Zooms, I'm in another class. Um, and how confident do I feel? I do sort my recycling and I actually have some questions about um, like compostable plastics today, if you guys talk about that, because I know the um, kind of what's accepted on campus may be a little different than what's, you know, different municipalities because they use different waste haulers. So I'm curious to learn more about that. Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe you can jump in after, we'll have a slide on our compost stream and maybe you can jump in and ask a question then. Do we have everyone else? Has David introduced himself? Can you jump in here, David? Oh, hello. Um, I won't turn my video on for too long because I'm gonna be moving around, but I'm David Scrimter with the Green Labs program. So I'm just curious what you guys are discussing and maybe learn something random. So look forward to it. Great, thanks, David. And we'll give Karen one more chance. Are you with us, Karen, to introduce yourself? If not, uh, we'll move on. Okay. All right. <laughs> so this is what we call the zero waste hierarchy, the hierarchy of stuff that we think of when we're reducing our waste on an individual level. So those are refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and responsible disposal. This hierarchy sometimes looks different depending on um, which image you look at. Um, but the re we'll go through all these steps really briefly. So refuse we think of as the first step. Um, right now we could think of an example as receipts. You can opt for an email option or no receipt instead of taking something that you won't need and will throw away. Some people use them, but if you're not, then that's something you can do or at large events, which we're not going to right now, you can say, no, I don't want this. So the first step is to consciously make those decisions, not to accept items that you don't need. Reduce kind of follows into that, consciously thinking about ways you can reduce your waste. Um, sometimes we talk about this as bulk shopping or um, maybe on Amazon selecting the less waste option. We won't get too much into these. Um, reuse, again, can help with reducing. You can get um, use reusable items or even reuse items that are not like labeled reusable as many times as possible to prolong their lifespan um, as products and materials. And then recycling, which we'll be talking about today, you all will notice is not at the top of this hierarchy. Uh, recycling, although you should sort your waste and it is part of um, how we're getting to zero waste by 2020. It's not a full solution for waste. Um, and there's still some, it still takes a lot of energy and materials to process and re put these into the environment. So it shouldn't be an excuse to keep producing unnecessary waste. And then responsible disposal, um, sorting your waste the best you can. Rot is also usually in this pyramid, which is compost. We'll talk about our compost stream later. That's often located between reuse and recycle in this pyramid. Great, thank you, Rose. Um, yeah, so as Rose said, recycling is definitely not the first thing that you should dump, jump to when you have waste. Um, basically, what is recycling? Well, recycling is the process of uh, taking waste materials and converting them into reusable things that um, we can use in our everyday lives to prevent unnecessary um, permanent disposals of materials that are potentially usable. Um, in turn, this reduces uh, the consump consumption of raw materials, um, energy us usage, air pollution um, from the incineration of the waste, and uh, water pollution from leakage and landfilling. Um, just by decreasing the need for uh, more conventional waste disposal, and in addition, it also lowers greenhouse gas emissions um, compared to the regular process of plastic production. Uh, so as you can see, the main steps uh, that constitute recycling are collection, which you will, you're probably more familiar with. That's just when you throw your waste away in a, a recycle bin uh, around campus or even at your home. And then processing is what happens in the factory. Uh, this is taking the, um, uh, this is taking the products that you put into the recycling bin and just breaking it down into the components. Uh, that someone would need to, for the second step, manufacture something new. And then this completes the cycle when the uh, consumer purchases a new product, product that's made from the recycled materials. Joseph will talk a little bit more about the recycling industry in a bit, but you should remember that recycling is an industry like anything else that collects materials and repurposes them. So waste sorting at Cal is how those items are gonna get there. So we have four different waste streams here at Cal. That means there's four different bins, four different signs that you'll see around campus. They're compost, landfill, 
And we have two recycling streams, mixed paper and cans and bottles. This is called a dual stream recycling system. It means that um, we have two different places that these uh, materials go to. So the first one of these is cans and bottles. You can put aluminum foil, cans, glass, and plastic bottles in here. You can also put any number one or number two plastic items. So these you can, you can identify by looking at them. They should be hard plastics and any hard plastic will have the little symbol on the top left corner of this sign, the arrows in a triangle shape with a number inside that labels the type of plastic that it is um, and different uh, places, locations um, will accept different numbers of these. Out on campus, we accept numbers one and two. I encourage you to look at, um, just look up which plastics you can recycle in your area if you're not in Berkeley. Uh, for example, I'm in San Diego and they accept more numbers than that. Um, anyways, you will have an opportunity for questions after these waste sorting slides if you're confused. Um, the next one is mixed paper. This is our second recycling stream. You can put clean office or scrap paper, flattened boxes, um, scrap paper, mail, newspapers, files, um, post-it notes. You can all, if they have uh, tape and staples on it, that's fine. Please remember to remove paper clips. It's always best to have like the, just the straight material of paper, cardboard, et cetera, but tape and staples shouldn't be like a reason not to put these items in these um, this waste stream or this bin. Um, if you have really large boxes that don't fit, please just put them next to the, the bin, leaned up nicely, flattened, um, so that they're easy for our facilities people to pick up. Um, our next stream is compost. So this is anything that was once alive. We get a lot of confusion on this. This can be food scraps, meat and dairy cheese, compostable dining materials, number seven PLA plastics. Um, so that's a little confusing. It's not just number seven plastic. Number seven means other and PLA stands for plant. So that means plant-based plastic. Um, at, in Berkeley, you can identify these usually with a green strip. They'll be on like plastic coffee cups a lot of times or even like the paper coffee cups as well. Um, most dining hall uh, plates and utensils will also be compostable. Uh, but you should check on takeout items around Berkeley because they don't follow the same standards as Berkeley. You can also put, as you can see, people get confused on napkins. Napkins are on the sign here on the left. Any like soiled paper, you're supposed to only put clean and dry paper into those recycling streams, but you can put soiled paper or um, like thinner paper like napkins into the compost bin because it was once a lot, it was once a trip. Our last one is landfill. You can put any of those plastics that I haven't mentioned so far into landfill. That's numbers three through seven, not seven PLA. Um, those are coffee lids, styrofoam, plastic bags, plastic wrappers, any flimsy plastic where you won't be able to identify um, the triangle with the number inside will be one of those. Um, a hard plastic that's not um, one or two is straws. You can also put tea bags in here. I've also put a note, anything that you're unsure of how to sort, it's always better to put into the landfill because you don't want to contaminate the other waste streams. If you contaminate another waste stream, um, it's possible that that um, batch of recycling or compost will be um, taken to the landfill um, because we can't have people like digging through those to, uh, that's not safe for our facilities workers. Also, um, more broadly, we different facilities will accept certain contamination rates. Um, and if our campus has too high of a contamination rate, our facilities may stop accepting our stuff. So it's really important um, to keep those waste streams pure. So you should always try to check and um, figure out what, where your item goes. But as a last resort, please do put it in the landfill instead of taking a guess into a different stream. We'll talk, we won't get too much into plastics because they're confusing and it's a, it's a big hole that we're not, that you guys don't really need to go down. Um, but as I, these list all those different types of plastics, what their numbers are, they show you what the symbols will look like. They talk about um, which items will go into these. If you wanna look at this infographic, I can share the slides at the end. It's also on our social media, which we'll provide you handles for at the end. All right, so we're gonna do a quick little activity to guys help you get more familiar with the uh, different plastics that exist there in the world. 
Um, so uh, we'll give you guys a few minutes just to find a plastic item around you. Um, and you should be able to find the um, triangle or the, the cycle uh, of plastic on it. It's pre they're pretty easy to find on most plastics. If you can't find it, then there's definitely going to be one in your in your waste bin right now. So it should be easy. Um, and then for the second part, it turns out that um, the plastics that you're going to recycle in Berkeley are different depending on what city you are in. Um, so we're going to talk about that. So we'll give you a few minutes to do that. And uh, we'll see you in, we'll see you at how about 128? This should not take very long. And you look like you may be the first one back. Do you want to kick us off with your plastic item and show us that number? Um, yeah, so I have like a little hairspray bottle um, and it's like um, in a hard plastic bottle and it has a one in the little triangle. And it says P-E-T-E, -E, I think, below it. Yeah, so um, what are you in Berkeley right now? Yes. Okay, so of course one in Berkeley can be recycled. So that's that's great. I hope you found that from your recycle bin. <laughs> I'm not done with it yet, but it'll be there when I'm done. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, uh, does, is anybody else back? Does anybody else wanna share what they found? Um, I can go. Um, I have Phil's coffee and the cup is BPI compostable. So that's not, I mean, I don't think it's plus, it's plastic based. I, I don't know, I can't rip it. So maybe it does have some kind of plastic in it. But um, the cap is seven other. That's what it says, seven other. It does not say seven PLA. Yeah, so sevens usually can't be recycled because seven refers to like, it says like other, like other kinds of plastics, they're hard to, yeah, they're hard to recycle. It's usually just seven PLA. Um, but as for the cup itself, a lot of times, especially if you have something with hot beverages, there's usually like a paper outside and then the inside is made of a plastic. Um, with that, you kind of like, you can, actually, I'm not sure if you can recycle that. That's if you can, something. so the, the paper coffee cups will have like a, like a plastic liner on the inside a lot of times, which means they go in the landfill. However, a lot of them in Berkeley have that green strip. Um, and that means that that liner is made of something else, for example, like a wax um, or some kind of bioplastic. Um, generally, the rule is if you can rip it, then that um, whatever it is, is thin enough or not plastic and you can put it um, in the recycling. So, um, I mean, can I ask a follow up question then about like wish cycling? Aren't there a lot of probably when before campus was closed, aren't there a lot of students who see this cup that says BPI compostable and then they're like, okay, let me put it in the compost. So I guess I'm curious is like how, like has Brooke, have you guys, how have you been able to manage? Like, I know you're like informing us now, like people who are interested in this, like how to properly recycle, but how do you like, I guess inform people who see compostable and are like, okay, that's what I do. It's very much product by product. So it's hard to put out like broad education on that kind of thing. We call that greenwashing when people put uh, labels on materials that imply that they're recyclable compostable, but um, aren't actually like based on. But um, BPI compostable, a lot of commercial facilities do say that they process it. I'm not sure about BPI specifically. Lynn, you're on the call. Do you have something more specific to say on this? Yeah, the campus does accept BPI, compostable, certified. Um, now, whether that breaks down or not is another story. Um, so that's the issue, is that right now our requirement is that it at least has to be BPI certified for compost. So what Jenna has right now is accepted. Now, whether it breaks down fully at our compost facility is still in question. Um, is that counter Costa? Yes. Each. Okay. Wait, you, what do you mean by? West Contra Costa, the ones who process the composting or is it that one and another one? It's the one, um, so we send it to Richmond, which is the West Contra Costa, yeah. And then we also actually do send it to Berkeley uh, on weekends. And then that goes to the Central Valley. That's the Recology. 
So those are the two that we send it to for now. Okay, so I worked with Recology this summer and my understanding is that they do accept it. Well, like they can process it, but then um, West Contra Costa, I talked with the ED there, executive director, and he said they, that that's considered contamination for them. Just a point of information that I've learned. Right, I, I've been waiting for them to give me, we've been going back and forth with West Contra Costa. So um, we've been giving them a chance to let us know, but unfortunately they have not given me that they will not take it. And our contamination okay. rate right now is something that they have not used to reject it. Um, again, it's also a very small percentage of what we're sending in our compost facility. Because um, again, we combine all our organics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's even, good. even with recology, again, as I said, the industry right now, that's kind of one of the issues with the compostable PLA is that even though they'll accept it, even with recology, I'm on, you know, we don't know if it's actually going to be breaking down at their process. But you know what, I like to, um, I know Joseph has a slide at the later for us to kind of talk about recycling. We also have a compost session, which is next week. So okay. I think we Thank want to you. join that one too. Yeah. Okay, my apologies. Thank you. No, no, it's good. It's, it's what we want, we want dialogue. Yeah, that was, that was really good. A learning experience for everyone. Please continue to ask any questions. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. All right, so we got to, does anybody else have a plastic item they'd like to share? Maybe something controversial. We can talk well, about this it. is David. <laughs> um, David. So I just double checked again in my garbage because last night I was craving Beyond Burgers and I get crazy just looking at the packaging and of course it's plastic number five. Okay. That's that's sad to hear. <laughs> I want to make a petition to Beyond Burger to quit using so much plastic in, with their packaging. You should. I've seen some fast food places switching over lately. It's like a big marketing point for them nowadays to put it as like sustainable. Like I'm noticing Colorado and California. So maybe, maybe you should. Yeah, maybe you should write a quick letter to them. Let them know. Hey, if enough people do, we could really change something. <laughs> Is that, hey David, is that one that you bought like at the market? It's um, the stack that I buy at Costco and they come in individually. Well, it's two per tray and it's a lot of plastic. Got it. It's, it's actually funny. The, um, I was at Safeway the other day and I was just buying sausages and they actually come, they're starting to make it in a fiber paper base. So it's encouraging to see. I actually took a picture of it and knowing me. Um, so hopefully, yeah, Beyond Burger can go towards a fiber-based um, tray. You're right. They do it for some of their sausage stuff, but not the burgers yet. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, that's, again, good to know to let them know. Yeah, yeah but surprisingly, it's not recyclable for us. And I doubt, again, I know even though um, Rose mentioned, like in San Diego, they'll take it. But again, we'll talk about later. Taking it doesn't necessarily mean recycling it, so. Yeah, all right. Um, so the last people, what about what about you, Kieran? Do you have anything, any input on this? Any plastics? All right. Um, so we're gonna move on from the activity. Oh, that is okay. what I thought would be next. Oh, sorry guys, one second. That's okay. correct. Okay. Okay. So now for why we recycled. There's a lot of of really great reasons why we recycle. We'll go over the controversy later, but there, it basically reduces down to five important um, things that it does for us and it does for our societies and the environment. So the first one is it uh, reduces cost and improves energy efficiency, uh, which in turn reduces carbon emissions, which in turn conserves natural resources. Uh, which in turn reduces waste and creates jobs. So it's really great for everything if you do it right. Next slide. Okay, so for cost efficiency, reclaiming existing recyclable items a lot of the times is the cheapest available source of new raw materials. Uh, so for example, when you buy scrap steel, it's a lot cheaper than uh, if you went out to mine new iron and then had to go through the process of refining it into new steel. Uh, so 
Current studies are showing that energy and production costs are reduced by 30% for products that are um, that use recyclable glass and metal. And that, those are really good numbers and they can do a lot of that. There's a lot of potential for benef benefiting effects. Next slide. So the next one is, of course, it has environmental benefits. A lot of the original production of the raw, raw materials has a large, like a huge environmental impact. Uh, some of these are digging mines, cutting down forests, um, drilling for oil because plastic is petroleum based. Um, so it's all just uh, an extraction at the expense of the environment. And at a minimum, it uses up land. Um, and often in the land that it uses, it creates pollution as well. Next slide. So reclaiming existing materials uses up no additional land and many recycling, except for the land made like taken up by the recycling plant, but minimal. Um, and a lot of recycling processes produce much less pollution than the original production would. So it saves valuable resources and it maintains the undisturbed ecologies of the natural ex ecosystems that would have otherwise been cut down or destroyed. Next slide. So of course, throwing away waste doesn't make it disappear. It all has to go somewhere and it's getting expensive and especially messy with land, landfill leaching and all that. So recycling is a tool that we've created to address this. Recycling combats the buildup of waste in landfill that would otherwise produce methane in the anaerobic uh, conditions that are commonly found at these sites. Next slide. Um, and lastly, recycling is a great source for jobs, uh, taking into account all the people who have to collect the recycling, refine it, uh, process, it process it both within the recycling facility and as a part of it. There's a lot of jobs to go around. Uh, current stats show that um, this number is so much that if the US increased its recycling rate just by 70% by 2030, it would create 1.1 million new jobs in addition to those already accounted for. Next slide. So for as great as recycling is, there are some drawbacks, but a lot of these can be alleviated if you are just conscious about what you're recycling and what you're putting into the recycle bin. Um, so sometimes recycling may not be the best for the environment as a whole. Um, here's some examples. So the plastics, metals, and uh, the paper fibers that currently make up most of our landfills are very valuable materials. I, I hope you know by this point. So if you consider all of that cost that's involved with drilling for oil, pumping it, uh, transporting it from place to place, uh, then refining it into plastic, it's a major cost. Uh, so the plastic in landfills is already refined and ready for reuse. Uh, but the major issue with recycling is that the labor costs to uh, process the material are often more high than the society can maintain. So it currently takes a lot of manual labor um, in the form of like people working at the recycling plants to sort the materials for recycling. Um, but it, and it results in recycling not being um, as economically viable as it could be in a purely economic sense, which uh, down the road can lead to an overall degradation of the environment as a byproduct if the society isn't um, financially sound enough to, to maintain the amounts that they're recycling. And if you think about it, breaking down the plastic into its monomers is uh, either a, a dirty-ish process or, a, or it's com completely chemically impossible if the polymer has been cross-linked. Um, and so you can just grind it up and use it as a filter, but the applications are kind of limited. So in the end, a lot of times it requires more energy to recycle than it, than it does just making it from the crude oil, um, especially when you factor in transportation of it. Um, but again, you also have to look at the environment, environmental impacts of not using those raw resources. Um, on the other hand, though, recycling something like scrap aluminum, it requires only 5% of the energy to um, create it from recycled aluminum, alum, aluminum than it uses to make it from scratch. Um, so for this reason, uh, about 31% of all aluminum produced in the United States comes from recycled scraps. But if you do the um, energy analysis on that, it should be way more because that's a huge um, source of profit and a huge source of energy efficiency. Uh, so that just is a little bit of insight into um, how and 
like what the current state of recycling is. Um, as for paper, it's really good. Um, you can think of it as instead of providing wool, wood pulp for a paper mail, instead you provide it with paper, wool, paper pulp, which is a lot easier to um, deal with. So these are all just things that I like for everyone to be more conscientious of when they're recycling. Um, you should be engaged. I wrote it there. You should be engaged in your wastes past and future, which just means you should think about where it's coming from and where it's going to go after you put it in the recycling bin. Um, and that's really the only way you kind of have to use human intuition um, to figure out if uh, recycling at that time is great. Um, but of course, in most circumstances, we do encourage you to recycle as much as you can. Um, it's just just be more conscientious about uh, what and when you're recycling. All right, so we're gonna open up the floor to any questions, anything that we haven't covered or explained a little too vaguely or just something completely out of the blue. We'd, we'd love to start a dialogue on recycling. So it's open to anyone, you can just hop in. Or if anyone from Cal Zero Waste has anything else they'd like to add as well. I know we have some extra time here. I can ask a question about recycling specifically. Um, so you mentioned like one and two is like can be recycled um, on and Berkeley's campus, which is what I remember from when I worked at Cal Zero Waste. Um, I'm wondering, like, obviously students come from, you know, Oakland, Berkeley, like different places. And my understanding, I live in the student cooperatives um, and the city of Berkeley does like let you recycle like plastics, like, like more that than one and two. So do you guys like find ways to like, um, yeah, how do you, I, and we talked about this last time, like in terms of how it is very confusing and there's, you know, very, it's very much dependent on like the specific city. Um, but since Berkeley does have a diverse, you know, range of students and professors affiliates when everyone's on campus, kind of how do you communicate that to people? Like what's your strategy? Um, well, here on campus, we have a pretty good uh, network just across the different organizations that are working on uh, zero waste. Um, so we do have a lot of outreach teams like Cal Zero Waste itself is divided into um, teams that just work with specific organizations on campus like uh, uh, Reuse, which is the um, thrift store on campus. And then also we have a team dedicated to um, managing waste produced within the uh, individual dorms. Um, so it's it's really just like we're fundamentally based off of a lot of small organizations that like stack on top of each other and then we keep information flowing pretty uh easily and excessively through them uh to make sure that everything is working um just with everyone else's understanding i think to add to that we have the signage which has like the the specs on it, the like the, the numbers on it, we have all those on our signs and those signs are on every single bin and we've worked really hard to standardize those so that people see those repeatedly and they know it's coming um, from us and that all of our bins are the same so that people um, get less confused about that kind of thing. During the school year, we have more like tabling events. I work specifically on the housing team and so we're, one strategy of ours is to catch residents right when they're coming in into those dorms um, and try to focus some education there because then they'll um, continue with that knowledge throughout their four years here. Um, I've also, on our building rollout program, when we implement new infrastructure, we educate like the faculty who work there. Like the, when we, um, we put them, like when we put new bins like in an office building, we always um, work with the facilities and the people who work there to make sure that everyone understands like the new changes that have occurred. Um, did that, is that yeah. helpful? Yeah, it's great. Thank you. I'm, I've been like away from campus for like some time. So it's nice to like get an update on, like, it sounds like, yeah, you're doing very similar, um, activities, um, and organizing that we did 
three years ago. So it's exciting to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Zero Waste so, Coalition. Yeah. So yeah. I'm in the, I'm like with um, Kate and Jessica and like the Zero Waste Lab. So that's, um, I think we also kind of sometimes connect with the Zero Waste Coalition. So that, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And if anyone on the Zoom call doesn't know, the Zero Waste Coalition is, um, it's, it's like a mega organization that brings together um, a lot of, or well, all of the like uh, conservation related organizations or like the waste related organizations at Berkeley. Um, and it's just like a means to improve communicate communication between everyone um, and to like facilitate collaborations and projects. And it's really just like a main resource uh, for zero waste on campus that you can refer to or any of the organizations can can refer to or work through. Any other questions? This is David. I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, David. Um, in general, just recycling on campus. I know um, there's been various efforts through like Jacobs Hall in School of Engineering to do some kind of recycling on campus. And I think we've lost touch with uh, some of those efforts. So I wasn't sure if that's still happening or if anyone is connected to that effort. I'm unfamiliar, but um, potentially one of our older members who's on the call will be able to talk about it, potentially Lynn. Um, sorry to pass so many of these questions off. We have a lot of experienced people on our call today. David, are you talking about just labs or the building? You know, in general, I know there was like a couple different efforts, um, more on the building. I think they were going to try to figure out how to chip and recycle and turn it back into 3D printer filament and that effort. Um, I wasn't sure if there's similar things still happening on campus. Uh, the 3D filament with the plastics um, is still going on. Um, that's under the CERC. So we've been, it's still under the Zero Waste Research Center. So Teresa would probably have more information on it. Actually, she just emailed me. I think they just hired a new person to run that project. So um, yeah, we, we actually started off as a green initiative fund. We developed the project and then turned it over to the CERC. So uh, David, I'll copy on the email back to Teresa. I think she just hired someone to get that program going. Cool, thank you. I did, I did want to get back to just in case, so Jenna's question, so coffee cups and those cups are not recyclable or compostable. Um, again, the place that Jenna brought it, it, the cup says BPI certified, at least it's gone through the certification process. Um, some of the compostables, uh, if they're labeled biodegradable, those are not compostable. You probably know that back from your days. <laughs> so, yeah. So just in yeah. case. I you know, think the other thing I, is uh, people, this is the other problem that coffee shops, I don't know if they're back and taking reusable cups or not. So Annie actually, Annie actually took over your project, Jenna. So we're looking at it right now of whether or not we can revisit reusable cups at the cafes. Because again, with COVID-19, they all went from zero refills to all disposables. Yeah. Uh, hoping, I don't know if the coffee shop you went to, did they not allow reusables? I think Phil's, I actually haven't asked, but like it, from all my observation, it looks like they don't do that. Like it's like very limited people inside. And yeah, I, I should ask though. Um, but I'm trying to think if, I just started drinking coffee again. So I, <laughs> I haven't done a lot of exploration, um, but I know Jessica is working with a lot of researchers in the Zero Waste Coalition to look into that so I'll connect on that end. Um, I'm actually like kind of what I'm focusing on is community composting projects so like sometimes you at the Berkeley student farms there's people like putting these types of products in you know at the compost pile and uh, like it's questionably gets even broken down in commercial facilities and it does not get broken down easily in like a community composting pile. So that's kind of the work I'm looking at. It seems yeah. like you know, already know a lot about this, but when we went, we went to the compost facility and did like a tour of it last year and they were saying it had to do with their, um, 
I forget what exactly what it's called, their cycle, like the, and the number of weeks, they said it would break down if they had a long the temperature perception. and the process. Yeah. Yeah. But they said it wasn't really viable for them to extend their cycle long enough um, to break those down yet. But ecology, ecology, I believe does. Okay. So it's interesting because yeah, I saw on the website, like it did say like, um, you guys use like the Richmond, like West Contra Costa County. Um, and then you also like sometimes use another um, hollow, which I guess is ecology. So that's interesting because one of them can process it, I think, and one can't. But they still both, like technically you're saying land that they'll still take it, but they'll end up sorting it out. So that obviously raises their operation costs. Right, and then again, even with Recology site in the Central Valley, you know, they they won't tell us that everything is still being composted. So, it's still again, it's the process cycle. Is that when we were at the sixty to ninety day process, we knew that it was going to break down. Uh, but now that everyone's at the thirty to forty five day cycle, that's kind of been the issue. So, uh, one thing though, we did decide on campus is to start trying to phase out of PLA plastics. Uh, again, we want to go towards more anything that's more fiber based that we know that is breaking down in time. So, um, so, so that is one change um, after all these uh, change of how much process time is that we do know that fiber is able to be broken down at that time frame. And like I said, join us next week, Jenna. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about composting. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll come back next time. Thank you for- Yeah, but the cups, as I said, it's definitely not, I did want to revisit that because a lot of people think these cups are recyclable because they look like paper and we all know they're, they're not recyclable. So I did also want to note there was a, um, there's a new program, um, you know, as much as from the TerraCycle folks, their new program actually is called Loop and they partnered yeah. with, uh, of all people, Burger King to try to do reusables. So I'm yeah. hoping that effort is gonna take off. And then, um, you know, a lot of the fast food is, you know, the issue take out and then having disposables. So really hopeful that that program ends up being taken up by other fast food places. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for the info. Yeah, Rose, if you wanna go to the next slide just to show the next Zoom session. <laughs> Yeah, so this oh, yeah, is the Green Social. There um, you go. We encourage you all to go. It's on how to compost. Annie, who's on our call right now, will be leading it, I believe. It will be from 1 to 2 p.m. You can read a little more about it here in this description. Uh, if you want, uh, you can find this link also like on our, on our website and our social medias, um, which you can follow right here. Wow. <laughs> so thank you for coming to our Zoom social. You can email Joseph or I at any time with any other questions. Our emails are right here. We'll get back to you on those ones. Um, you can also visit our website, zerowaste.berkeley.edu for more info and like on those haulers in particular, those that info will be there um, in our social medias, obviously at the bottom. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys thank for you. coming. We, we actually had a really good discussion about recycling. So thank you everyone for participating. Thank you.